Hello and welcome to square 5, Manas and Jess, the fifth square in our wrapped in Jamie Crochet Along. My name is Petra, also known as Peeba Black Sheep. I am the designer and your host for this crochet along. So let's get started with square 4. You can read all the background story and the designer thoughts on the website blacksheepcrochet.com So we start with a magic circle which I like to start with a cross by crossing over the the yarn get in with a hook pull through and then let go as if you would make a slip knot but keep the circle open and then just close with a chain. So now some people like to make an additional chain to get started. I just like to keep my first loop a bit bigger. And we have a repeat of single crochet. And don't mind having this a bit bigger. You will see that it will come handy later on. And chain two. So that's a repeat. Single crochet chain two. Just want to pull this a little bit tighter to make it easier to crochet in there. Single crochet, chain two and twice more. Single crochet, chain two and another one. Single crochet, chain two. Okay, that's number four. Pull the ring tight and slip stitch into the tops of the first single crochet. Pull the yarn through and through again. Whoop. <laughs> okay, there we go. So We've got uh, four corners, one, two, three, four, and one single crochet in between those corners. So that's round one. In round two, we start with the chain one, and then I like to work away over my tail, as I have for the last four squares, if you have been following along. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet, into the corner space and then make sure you find that single crochet and another single crochet into that. So working over the tail or over the end here as I go so I don't have to weave it in. Always finding the corners we always have a single crochet, chain two, single crochet into the corner and then a single crochet into that single crochet from the first round. The corner and a single crochet and we're almost there. One more corner. corner and our last single crochet for this side because we started with a single crochet into the corner and that's where we slip stitch into. So this is not a stitch, this is the chain one with which we went up into the next round. So we slip stitch into single crochet into the first single crochet of the corner. That is round two. Look at that. Very quick and very easy. And again we, s we chain one and then single crochet, chain two, single crochet. If you find the stitch anatomy a bit difficult, you can 
use a stitch marker, just mark the first single crochet you just made and then it will be easier for you to find in the next rounds. Okay, so, so in round three we single crochet across. So that means we had the corner stitch and then we have one, two, three stitches. One, two, three. So that's three single crochet on each side and the corner single crochet on each of the sides. Yeah. So this is the single crochet that belongs to the fourth side. So here we have five single crochets on each side. Three on the side plus two from the corner. Yeah, one, one single crochet on each side. So you just continue around and then you slip stitch into this first single crochet. Your round three will be finished and we meet again for round four. In round four we have a small repeat. So starting with a chain one and then single crochet, chain two, single crochet into the corner space. We start our repeat with single crochet, single crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch. So that's the repeat again, single crochet, very small repeat single crochet in the back loop only and we end with one single crochet. And then we are in the corner here. So on this side you have one, two, three, four, five stitches plus the corner stitches from each side so that's seven stitches all together. Repeat around, slip stitch into the first single crochet and meet me back for round five. In round five we have a special stitch which is a treble to a 1b. And we start with this treble to A1B, which what that means is this is would be our next stitch. This is our working stitch. From here we count two A, two ahead, one, two, and one B, one round below. This is the front loop that's in there. I've marked it with a stitch marker for you to see. And you can use stitch markers to just easier find those front loops but I would also love to encourage you to learn how to just see them where where they are as they are because they're very distinct you see there those horizontal lines so they're quite easy to find so we start with a with a treble to a one b so yarn over twice for the treble insert the hook in the indicated front loop pull through and then pull through two, pull through two, and pull through the last two loops. Okay, so now we've worked a stitch in the front, which means that we have to skip the stitch that is behind this one, otherwise we would have an increase which we don't want. So we skip this stitch behind here. So that's the one we skip, and we work five single crochet starting from the next stitch. is five single crochet and then we end the round as we started it with a treble uh, with a treble but this time not to A but to B two stitches behind so this is the round we count we count in so one two stitches behind one round below here's our next front loop that we have to work in so we go back we go behind and then work our treble into that front loop. And again, we have to skip the stitch that is behind there. It is not 
specifically stated in the pattern because I am assuming that you read the stitch collection and the introduction which says that those stitches need to be skipped. Okay, and then we go directly into the corner. Okay, so on this side we have nine stitches all together, which is the seven stitches here between those corners plus the single crochet on each side of the corner. So yeah, just go ahead and work around slip stitch into the first single crochet and meet me back in round six. So here we are in round six, which is a very easy round. And I consider all these rounds quite easy and also this as an easy square. So finding the first stitch after the corner, we start with a single crochet into that first stitch. Then we make a DCBB, that's a double crochet behind and below. So remember we had this treble in the previous round, so now we have to make a double crochet into that stitch that is behind. So you see we skipped the stitch so we have those loops available to us here. Those loops here. And we just make a double crochet into them. So technically there are two rounds below which is one of the reasons why we have a DC. We just want to close the, the gap behind this treble here and it also helps to bring out the stitch definition. And then just another five single crochet. For five. And then we are at the treble again and we make another double crochet behind and below. Can you see if you look like that, so then you can see them peeking through. So those are the loops that we want to go in. They are very easy to find. Okay, and we have one single crochet before we are back in the corner. So that's it already for round six. As usual, pause and continue to work the same side oh, the same on the other three sides and then slip stitch into the first single crochet of the corner and we meet again in round seven. I've already done the chain one so I just have to do the corner of round seven single crochet chain to single crochet. Make sure you find the first stitch because even though you skip it, it's important that you know which one you're going to skip. We start with a front post treble to a 2B. So treble means yarn over twice and then we count from this current stitch. We count one, two ahead and one two rounds below. So in the previous round we made the DCBB and two rounds below we made this treble. So this is the treble we work around that we made two rounds below. So front post and make a treble. So now it's good to know which is the stitch that we need to skip. This one. So in the next stitch we start a little, from the next stitch, we start a little repeat, which is a single crochet, single crochet in the back loop of the next stitch, and again, three, three more times, single crochet, single crochet in the back loop, single crochet, single crochet in the back loop, one more time, single crochet, single crochet in the back loop, and one single crochet. We started 
with a front post. So we are ending with a front post. So now we're going to be two bees, two stitches behind, one, two. That was the DC we made in the previous round. So one, two stitches below, two B, two B, two behind, two below. That's the front post around the treble from round five. And don't worry if those loops should be a bit bigger when you make them from trebles and, and the like. We Because you see we work around those with front posts, you don't even see them, so there's nothing to worry about. So now we have to skip the stitch behind again, which means we work directly into the corner with our corner single crochet. So on in round seven, you should have 13 stitches all together, meaning 11 stitches here between those corners, including the third, the, each of the single crochets from the corner, so one from each side. Okay, again, of course, repeat on the other three sides, slip stitch into the first single crochet of the corner, which is this one, and meet me in round eight. Round eight is again very relaxed, easy and straightforward. So after the corner, make sure you find the first stitch like that. And we single crochet into that first stitch. And now we have another DCBB again, a double crochet behind and below. So because we're working, you see those loops peeking through. We're working behind that treble from the previous round, that front post treble. We go into those empty loops from the stitch we skipped and work the double crochet into them. And now we just have to make nine single crochet across. and nine. There we go. And there is another double crochet behind and below. See them picking through? Here we go, those loops. Those are the ones we want. And we double crochet into them. And now there is one single crochet left before the corner. And here is the corner again. Okay. Very easy, very simple crochet on the other sides and on the other three sides and slip stitch into the first of the single crochets in the corner. Meet me back in round nine. So back in round nine, we will have two special stitches which is one special stitch, but mirrored. So it will be worked differently. But first we start with a single crochet into the first stitch after the corner. And then we have that special stitch. It is called a front post treble, treble two together. And what it means is we work two stitches together with two legs and the first leg goes around the front post treble from one stitch ahead, this is the current stitch, one ahead, two rounds below. So one round below was the DC we made and two rounds below was the front post treble from round seven. So this is the first leg and then the second leg goes into the stitch the, into the front loop of the stitch that is three ahead from the current, one, two, three ahead, and two rounds below, one, two. See, so there is the front loop we made. And 
we start with the front post part of the leg, so yarn over twice, and then insert the hook under the treble, and then we just make a treble, but we don't finish it, leaving two loops on the hook, yarn over twice again, and then we find that front loop. It is the first front loop of those four that we made earlier, you know, the four repeats we had, so it's the first of those front loops. We insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through two, and pull through two, and now we pull through all three loops on the hook. Because we have made a stitch in the front now, we have to skip the stitch that is behind that. So our next stitch will go in here. Yeah, see, so we worked into this stitch. We worked into this stitch. We skip this and we insert into the next. And we start here to make 11 single crochet. Remember those those um, squares, they're always symmetrical. So by now you're in the middle of the side and later on you will be making a mirrored version of this stitch, which is what I said, it's basically one stitch, but because it's mirrored we have to work it differently. It is like a second stitch. And of course, because I talked, I lost my stitch count. I just have to quickly go back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one more. Or alternatively, I could have counted backwards. So I need to have one single crochet at the end, skip one stitch, which is replaced by this front post two together. So I'm in the right position. So my next stitch is that treble, front post treble together. So now the first leg goes into the front loop of the stitch, three behind and two rounds below, which is the last front loop of those groups we made earlier. So this was the first, this is going to be the last. So the first part of this two together is the treble leg into the front loop, leaving two loops on the hook, yarn over twice again, and now the second part is, like here, the one where we go around the treble. So that's the front post treble part of the stitch. And that happens when you work with cotton. Always have a bit that is splitty. Okay, so again we skip the stitch behind and our last stitch goes into the one just before the corner and here we are in the corner. So in round 9 you will have 17 stitches altogether, the 11 single crochet, then the two front post trebles, trebles together, and a single crochet before or after them, plus one single crochet from the corner. So now repeat, rewind if you need to, repeat on the other three sides, slip stitch into the first stitch of the corner, and meet me in round 10. So we are now in round 10 and we started with a chain 1 and then single crochet, chain 2, single crochet into the corner space. Make sure to find the first single crochet, oh, the first stitch after the corner, and start with two single crochet. And then we have a DCBB, a double crochet behind and below the treble two together from round nine. So we just find those two front loops that we're peeking through there. 
and close the gap with a double crochet. We skip the stitch in front of course and then another two single crochet. So now let's look at the special stitch that is going to come. So it's called a treble, double treble two together and the first leg of these two stitches together goes into the front loop that is three rounds below the next stitch. This is our current stitch and we go one, two, three rounds below and that is the same leg as the, front, uh, the same front loop in which we made the second leg in the previous round. Okay, so we yarn over twice for the treble part of this stitch, insert the hook in that same front loop and almost finish the treble, leave two loops on the hook and now yarn over thrice. And you have already noticed that I've marked the next front loop with a stitch marker. So you could also count ahead from the current stitch one sorry, from here. So this is the stitch we worked last into. This is the current stitch. One, two ahead, one, two, three rounds below. So that is the front loop we work into. Or oh, it's just the next front loop that is available, that is free. Okay, so in this one we make the double treble leg of this stitch. One, two, three times through two loops and then through all three loops. So now we skip the stitch that is behind which is this one and we single crochet into the next and four more. So five single crochet starting from the next stitch. One, two, three, four and five. Then we have the same stitch, just mirrored. So our first leg is now the double treble leg and it goes into the stitch from the next, from this working stitch, one, two, behind and one, two, and one, two, three below. So the one that is the last front loop that is available that's free completely free. So yarn over three times for the double treble, insert the hook into this front loop, go through two, go through two, go through two and leave two loops on the hook, yarn over twice and now we find the next front loop in which we made the first leg of this double treble two in the previous round. So that's this one. So they share a front loop. And now we go through all three. And we skip the stitch that is behind this treble, double treble, which is this one. And we make two single crochets in the next. In each make one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. And then we're back add this double treble which means we make a DC behind and below and you can just push these aside to quickly and easily find those front loops and just make a DC behind and below and we skip again the stitch that is in front of this DCBB we have two single crochets, two single crochets left before we are back in the corner. So it looks a bit complicated, but you just have to count and just, you know, see the bigger picture. We're going to make a crown. So we're, we are having shared front loops here and here. Yeah, to each side there is a, a leg that goes in one front loop that is empty and the other leg, either the f 
the, f the first or the second goes into a shared front loop. So that's all you need to be aware of in this round and you should have 19 stitches all together. So starting here with the two single crochet, then the DC behind two single crochet, then the special stitch, five single crochet, special stitch, two single crochet, DC behind two single crochet, and one from each corner. So that's 19 stitches all together. So go ahead, repeat on the other three sides, slip stitch into the first single crochet from the corner, and meet me in round 11. We are in round 11 now and in this round we're going to have a special stitch again which will close the main part of the crown but before we do that we have three single crochet and if you have a look you see those top loops of the double treble that we made in the round, not previously, but two rounds below. So in, in those top loops, we just grab those top loops and we make a 4DC popcorn. Now if you like small popcorn stitches, then you can do only three double crochet. If you like big popcorns, big fat popcorns, you may want to make five or six double crochet before you take out the hook, insert it back into the top of the first double crochet, grab the loop again, pull it through and close with a chain one. Well, that's how we do the popcorn stitches. There are methods how to close the popcorn differently where you don't have to take out the, the hook, you just turn your work, but I find this the easiest. You skip the stitch that is behind the popcorn and from here we have two single crochet, a DC behind and below the stitch from the previous round, that special stitch to close the gap and to bring the design a bit forward. Then another two single crochet. Now we have a double treble, one A, four B, two together. So let's look at the stitch. So one A means we go one ahead and one B means we go one behind from the next stitch, from the current working stitch. So this is our current working stitch. This would be one ahead, this would be one behind. And we go down one, two, three, four rows. So one ahead, one behind, means we are back in those front loops in which we made those double treble legs in the previous round. Yeah, so we, we are sharing a front loop again. So let's yarn over three times and go into this first front loop, make a double treble leg and then yarn over again three times, go into the next front loop and make another double treble leg. So go through two, go through two, go through two. Now we have three loops on the hook. We go through all three. And this stitch is now exactly in the middle of your side. So from here on, we do the same as we did here in reverse order. So we skip the stitch that is behind the one we just made, which is now in the middle. You should have two stitches left before this double treble. In each of them we have a single crochet. So that's 
correct? Then we have a DC behind that special stitch from the previous round. We skip the one in front, that special stitch. We'll make another two single crochet. And we make another popcorn into the top loops, into the top loops of that special stitch from two rounds below. And again, I am making a 4DC popcorn because that is the size that I find most appealing. And you can do bigger or smaller ones if that is what you prefer. So you can certainly be flexible. So I take the hook out, one, two, three, four, back, sign the first of those double crochet groups, pull through and close with a chain one, skipping the stitch behind. We finish with three single crochet. Oops. One, two, three. So in case you are not sure which one, whether you finished, whether you skipped the right amount of single crochets, you just count back from the corner. So this is the corner. You count back one, two, three single crochets and that's where you make your first. And then of course the corner single crochet. Alrighty, so that's all for round 11. Again, this may look a bit complicated, but you see when you follow, it's really simple. You just need to count and make sure you skip the stitches behind he here and here and here. Have the DCs here. So it's very simple. Simple and easy stitches. Okay, so now re repeat on the other three sides and then close with the slip stitch and meet me for round 12. And just like that, we are in round 12 already. So we start round 12 after the corner with four single crochet. Three and four. And then a DCBB, a double crochet behind the popcorn from the previous round. So we find those loops and we double crochet. And then we find the next stitch, which is this one. So this is the closing chain of the popcorn. And this is the next stitch. And from this, two single crochet. And now we are making another popcorn. You see, we've got those front loops available from the special stitch to runs below from round 10. We'll make another popcorn into those loops, those top loops. And you may have noticed that the square seems to be quite wobbly and that it may seem like this is never going to be straight, but it really will. So even in the iron weight yarn, the Drops Paris, which is very big, <laughs> you see, can't even fit it. It's a very big one and it lies completely flat. I do believe that this has been blocked already, but you see, it's completely flat and it will be a really nice, really nice square. So don't worry about the uh, wobbly parts for the moment, it will straighten itself out at the latest after blocking. So we skip the stitch behind the popcorn. We have another two single crochet. And then we DC behind the popcorn stitch. 
So this is actually a repeat. We had the DC behind here, and then we have two single crochet, and then the popcorn, and then two single crochet. We have the same repeat again. So starting with a DC behind, then two single crochet, a popcorn, popcorn stitch, thing working with cotton you sometimes have surprising things coming up <laughs> and that's that's four double crochet closing with a chain one and skip the stitch behind the popcorn and to single crochet again. So that is the second repeat. That we started with a DC behind to single, popcorn to single, DC behind to single, popcorn to single. Now we have another DC behind. And we finish with four single crochet. If you are unsure which is the next stitch to work into, just count back from the corner. So that's a corner. One, two, three. The fourth from the corner is your first of the four single crochet group. And that is your side finished of round 12. Okay, as always, rewind if you need to and finish the other three sides. Slip stitch into the first single crochet of the corner and meet me in round 13. When you work the single crochets or any stitches in round 13. Just be aware that in round 14 we're going to work in the third loop, which means a good idea is either to use a bigger hook size for this round, to use a smaller hook size for the next round, or to make an effort to work the single crochets in this round really loosely, so that they're not so tight in the next round, or you could make half double crochets in this round. If you choose this option, you should do that for all the squares because it may alter the height of your round. But if you do the HDCs, then um, it will be very easy to do the third loops in the next round. Just do it on, on all squares then to make it look a bit more unison. If you, if you want to. Oh, we're not there yet. <laughs> we're still in round 13. So we start with 8 single crochet. Make sure that you find the first. And then we just do 8 single crochet. Those eight single crochet will bring you just before the, the first popcorn we made in the previous round. And here we make a DC BB again, a double crochet behind and below. And then we have two single crochet and we make a popcorn into the top loops of the special stitch from two rounds below, from round 11. And this popcorn is exactly in the middle of our side, as is this double treble together. So we've got three and another one. 
So four double crochet, bring together as a popcorn and close with a chain one. Now we have another two single crochet because we're going with the stitches in reverse order. We're on the second half of the side. A DC behind and below and eight single crochet towards the corner. And here we are in the corner. Alrighty, so you see nothing spectacular, a very easy round single crochet DC behind and a popcorn stitch. So repeat on the other three sides, slip stitch into the first single crochet and meet me for round 14. Remember to work this loosely or with one of the other methods that I mentioned earlier. So now we are in round 14. I've already made the chain 1. Now the single crochet chain to single crochet into the corner space. and. However you want to work, whether you want to do the back post single crochet or the single crochet into the third loops, you're going to make 12 of them. So let me go with you to looks like oh, I have not made them loose enough myself for there, getting there. Eight. Ah, oh, this one's a bit fiddly. Nine. loose, 10, I think I, from here on I remembered to work loosely myself. Oh, let's go. So double checking, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we are at the popcorn or just before the popcorn and instead of trying a third loop, which we, would be quite difficult, we're going to DC behind and below this popcorn and after that just continue with the single crochet into the third loop. I too will be working around all four sides slip stitch into the first of the single crochets from the corner and then we continue with round 15. In round 15 we have a small repeat that starts directly after we make the corner with one single crochet in the back loop only. 
of the next three stitches. Then three single crochet. And we repeat this four times. So the next is again single crochet in the back loop only of the next three stitches and then single crochet in both loops in the next three. So three back loop one two and three and three both loops. And again three back loops and three both loops. And we finish with three single crochet in the back loop only. So very quick, especially after doing round 14. So just continue on all three other sides and slip stitch into the first single crochet of the corner and I see you back in round 16. Round 16 is equally easy as round 15, in fact even easier, because all we do is we single crochet across. So starting in the first after the corner, make sure you find it, and from here just single crochet across. You should have 29 stitches, plus the two stitches on each side of the corner. So that'll be 31 stitches altogether. So when you've done the single crochet around all the way, we do a slip stitch into the first of the single crochets in, in the corner, and then we meet again in round 17. Round 17 is a simple round consisting of single crochet and trebles. And all trebles we make in round 17 are made in the front loop of the stitch two rounds below from round 15. Remember we had those, those repeats, three single crochet in back loop, three single crochet. Those are the front loops we work in. So we start the, um, we start with two single crochet. And then there is a repeat, which is three treble. So one treble in each of the front loops. If you find treble to be too long for the way you make them, try half trebles or maybe just generously long double crochet. Now because again we have worked in the front, we have to skip three stitches behind. One, two, three. And in those three we make three single crochets. So that is a repeat that goes all the way across. And when you're at the end, so if you repeat that continuously until the end, three treble, three single crochet, three treble, single crochet, treble, single crochet, treble, single crochet, you will have three trebles left. And then you have two single crochet. Remember, everything is symmetrical. So this is the middle treble group. So it means that 
from here you're just working the stitches on this side in reverse order from, from here. So you start here and then you go in reverse order for the second half. And since we started with two single crochet and then three trebles, that's also how we end. So just repeat that across for the rest of round of this side of round 16 and on the other three sides slip stitch into the first single crochet of the corner and then we meet for round 18. Almost there! We are in round 18 now and here again we have a small repeat starting with three single crochet, three, and then we have three DC BB. So one DC in each of the top loops behind and below the treble from the previous round and I am deliberately choosing to leave those trebles open and not to close them and then three single crochet again yeah. because if I did that so for example instead of making a DC behind if I did single crochet in the top of those trebles here from the previous round and would just continue, then it would look quite different. It's also still a 3D effect but I, f I f believe that the open trebles, which you know these are closed because we make the single crochet and these are open because we DCBB, we DC behind, um, will make it more three-dimensional. If you have a look at uh, at the sample here, so these are all open and I believe that they are quite three-dimensional which is the effect that I wanted to get. These represent, you know, if you, in case you're wondering, these three trebles, they represent the uh, or three treble, three single uh, that pattern here represents a chessboard. Maybe you are already got that. So that's a representation of the chessboard. And yeah, so the repeat is 3 DCBB and then 3 single crochet. And you do that four times all together. So we've done, t we started with a three single and then one repeat, two repeats, and you just do that three, four, and then you end with three DCPB and a three single crochet in the end. Yeah, again, just um, keep in mind that this is the middle from here from the second DCBB we work in reverse order for the second half of the side and work that all the way around slip stitch into the first single crochet of the corner and then we are in our last round for this square round 19 in case you're doing the border because the border will be the first round of well, round 20 will be the first round of the border and round 19 in that case will be the last round of this inner square. And we meet for that once you've finished all three sides and me too. And then i see you then. We start 
with round 19. I'd love to just quickly show you the difference between doing the DC BBs, which I've done in this round, uh, this side and on this side, and doing single crochet across, so which I've done on these two sides. So if you want to compare, this is DCBB and this is single crochet across. So whichever way you prefer, that's how you would have worked round 18. And in round 19, it is a very super, super simple round because you either make single crochet across again, but then of course you would go into the DCBBs and leave these ones open, or on this side of course you just go across. Or if you find it really difficult to do the third loops, you can do the same as you did here in round 13. If you did the HDC instead of the single crochet, Maybe you want to do this again, or alternatively, if you want to do back post single crochet instead of the third loops, that's fine too. So whichever you choose, uh, well, if you want to do the back post single crochet in round 20, I mean. So in round 19, you have a choice to make very loose single crochet across or to make HDCs, which you don't have to make very loose because the third loop is very easy to find if that's what you want to do for round 20. And you could also use a bigger hook, like same as in round 13, you could use a bigger hook for this round so that your single crochet are a little bit bit easier to work into in round 20. Or you could use the normal hook for this round and then a smaller hook for round 20. So really, you, you have a few choices, but nothing big, nothing really complicated. So whichever way you want to work round 19, it will affect round 20 of course and round 19, 19 is the last round before we start the border. The border officially starts in round 20 but in case you don't want to work a border at all and you just want to have this inner part of the square then you should just do round 20 and that will be your last round of the inner square. Otherwise, round 19, single crochet across and slip stitch into the first single crochet of the corner. In case you want to swap colors for the border, this will be the last round. Round 19 will be the last round in your current round and then you can start to make round 20 in a different color. So just cut the yarn, weave in the ends and start the border or round 20 in a different color. In case you don't want to work the border, round 20 here will be your last round for the inner part of the square and if you do want to make the border, round 20 will be the first round of the border pattern. So whichever you choose, either finish round 20 here for the inner square or meet me for round 20 to work the border. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and you get notified of any new videos I'm going to upload. And if you did not, then please let me know so I can make the next one better. Talk soon and bye for now.